Good morning, this is Jessica Warren of Into the Warren, and I am coming at you at 6.30 in the morning. It is Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. I um, am ready to go to work in about 20, 30 minutes. Just waiting on the babysitter to arrive to take care of my sweet Brooke. And then I am on my way to make it happen. The good news is that I get out early today um, because we just have kind of a more sparse schedule. So we're all leaving about an hour and a half early. So that's nice. I can get to go home and, and see the family and play and hang out with Brooke and my husband and, and all that kind of stuff. And maybe get some crochet in too if I can. So um, I wanted to make a little video today about some things that I'm working on and um, some uh, another uh, thing that I forgot to mention in the last video. I'm not going to edit this. I'm just going to upload it. So if there's mistakes again, I apologize. Uh, I'm just trying to get content out to you in a timely manner. So forgive the ums, the pauses, and the mistakes, please. So I forgot to mention when I was in Chattanooga, I went to this old bookstore. And they had a lot of really cool books. I looked in the crochet, like, needlepoint section. I'm really close to the camera, aren't I? Um, I went to the crochet section. There wasn't really any books about crochet, a lot of knitting books. But then as I was looking through the other bookshelves, I came across this book called Free Range Knitter. And it was interesting to me, even though I'm not a knitter, reading the um, summary and I want to share it with you. So Stephanie Pearl McPhee, AKA the yarn harlot, <laughs> returns to pen another hilarious, insightful and poignant collection of essays surrounding her favorite topics, knitting, knitters, and what happens when you get those two things anywhere near ordinary people. Free range knitter shares stories of knitting horrors and triumphs and knitting successes and defeats but mostly it shares stories about the human condition that ring true for everyone, especially if you happen to have a rather large amount of yarn in your house. And it really like intrigued me and I wanna read this book. I think I'm gonna bring it with me to work today during my lunch break and kind of start reading about it. So basically she's just knitting randomly in front of people who aren't knitters and just some of her experiences um, while doing the craft that she loves. So I really want to read it. With that being said, every day more and more, <laughs> I have like this urge to learn how to knit. And when I went to the yarn store in Chattanooga, this woman was knitting this beautiful little pink baby sweater and it was so gorgeous and I just love the way knitting looks and the texture. I'm not saying I'm crossing over to the dark side and just forget about crochet and move to knitting. I might not even be very good at knitting. I've never tried it. I do have knitting needles just hanging out in a drawer but I just want to try it and see how I feel about it and if I like it um, and you know that's something that I might tackle over the weekend when I have more time and I can watch some YouTube videos, because that's how I learned how to crochet really, is YouTube videos. My mom tried to teach me crocheting when I was little, but I'm left-handed and she's right-handed. And we always kind of had like slight issues trying to, you know, I guess translate how she was doing it. Um, and then I kind of just stopped doing it most of my life and came back and just started watching YouTube videos, which... Thank God for YouTube. Sometimes, you know, they have the left-handed versions for us. South paws, so I appreciate that. So I really think that book's going to be really funny and cool and relatable, whether you're a crocheter or a knitter. So there's that. And then the other thing, I wanted to show you some stuff I worked on. This is a finished object, believe it or not. So the book I shared with you a few days ago. I think my daughter's going to wake up. Nope. She's just laying on her belly. I don't know how she sleeps. She sleeps in the weirdest positions. Anyway, I showed a, you a book I got from thriftbooks.com, Boutique Hat, so I wanted to try my hand at it. Uh, one of the May bingo squares is to learn a new stitch, and this had the pineapple stitch, which I've never tried before. 
so I thought I'd give it a whirl. So I made this beret. I think it's called a pineapple stitch beret. And I love the center. I love it. It's so cool. And the pineapple stitch is pretty easy. It's almost like a bobble stitch, but um, at the end you slide through all the loops except the last two and then slide through the last two loops, if that makes sense. The yarn I used for this project is Care and Kindness in the color Tomato. I love this color. I'm not even a fan of red or orange, but I really do like this um, color. I think the pattern was fairly simple. And um, the only thing that I would say is um, when you make hats, make sure you check your gauge. I think that this hat, this hat does fit me. I wore it to work yesterday. But I would have liked it a little bit bigger. Yeah. Maybe I just have a big head. I don't know. But yeah, I think it could have been even not even bigger, but maybe more rows, like longer from top to bottom. I think that would have made it more of a better fit. But again, I really like it. I like this Karen Kindness. It's um, polyester. It's not acrylic. But it is very soft and... Um, I think it was it's a very pretty hat and I plan on making a lot more of the hats in that book my daughter's awake I see her in the monitor but she's also kind of asleep so I need to be quick okay and then of course I showed you this book this crochet for dolls a few videos back um, my daughter has that American girl Samantha doll and I was like you know what I want to work on something and I realized in this book all of the patterns take like zero one or two weight yarn I don't have any zero I don't have I get confused with the yarn weight I have a lot of baby fingering weight yarn I think that's a two it could be a one I'm not sure if it's a one I am so glad because I can finally use it for something it's just like just sitting there stored under a bit in a bin under my couch but if it I need to look it up and just verify the weight of baby fingering yarn um, but there's no worsted weight yarn in here that it there's a couple maybe DK but the majority is um, two or less in weight and um, but luckily I have this two sock yarn that I bought for um, another project but never ended up doing because it was just, um, it was more colorful than I thought and I didn't think it would be right for a garment for an adult. So I have like five of these just hanging out and so I got excited because I'm like, oh, I can use that. It's really pretty yarn and it's good quality yarn, but it's just, I didn't know what to do with it. So I am working on, let me show you what I'm working on. I'm working on this green coat right here, but I'm not using green obviously, I'm using the rainbow. And you know what's interesting about this pattern is some of the rows, after you complete a row, <clears throat> you don't chain one and turn and then go, you know, go across. It's reverse single crochet, so you go across. You chain one, but you don't turn, you reverse single crochet back down. It's strange. I've never done that before. And sometimes it's like front post only half double crochet reversing. It's like, it's very interesting. So I haven't done much. I just started this last night. Um, so I'm working on, I think what it does is this is like the shoulder and this is the coat coming down. And then you put the sleeves here. Um, yeah, so it's like in pieces. <laughs> this is not very impressive to show on camera, but I just started it last night. And um, But yeah, look at the colors. It's very rainbowy and very funky. So this is going to be a funky coat for the Samantha doll. And I hope Brooke appreciates that when she gets bigger and thinks it's cool. So I'm going to do probably a few of the outfits in that book, but I need to get some zero weight um, yarn. And I see it at thrift stores all the time for really cheap, so I probably will just do that instead of buying brand new yarn at the craft store. So that's really um, all I have for this morning. Um, I didn't really work on my granny square purse. I have it in a bag, like a project bag. I think I'm going to focus on that um, either today when I get home from work or sometime this weekend and really try to knock all the squares out at least. 
that's kind of my goal. Um, I'm not really sure what we're doing this weekend. I'm planning Brooke's birthday. I've gotten just about everything done for it. I got her a Tickle Me Elmo because she loves Elmo so much. So that's her present. Um, I also got some goodies for people coming to the party. And like I said, it's Bumblebee themed. Um, you know what? Let me show you one of the things I'm going to give the... I know it's not crochet related, but it's really cute. So hold on one sec. to be quick because my babysitter will be here soon but because it's um bumblebee themed I got these honey sticks like to put in some cups for people to um have to eat and Brooke can't have honey until she's one years old because honey can cause botulism in infants so she's never had honey before but she will be one and then she'll be able to try it and see if she likes it so I got this and the cool thing, I was like, what can I give, like, people who come to um, her party? That's cute. And because it is bee-themed, I got some wildflower seed packets, right? And um, so people can take them and bring them home and plant wildflowers in their yard. It's almost like, you know, it's better than, like, a candy and stuff because it's more long-lasting. But it's not even the cool part. They custom made a tag for the back. You see the little bee? And it says, it's a quote from a song. If I was a flower growing wild and free, I'd want you to be my sweet honey bee. And then there's the bee icon, and then it says Brooke's first bee day. So, as you can see, hopefully you can see it. It's a little blurry. But yeah, they custom made this. And you can take this little clip off. And on the other side has the directions on how to plant the wildflowers for them to grow in your yard. But I thought this was so cute. And um, I'm like really excited about having these on the table. Um, so yeah. So I thought those were neat. And they gave me like a whole bag. I got these on Etsy. And it's pennywildflower.etsy.com. They also have like sunflower seeds. You can make the tags customized to anything that you want. Um, you just give them the directions and they print them for you. So those are two of the things. I also got a Brooks first birthday like cake topper. I'm gonna go to Publix and get her cake. Um, like get the cake designer to see the pictures of the cake that I want. It's really just gonna be a simple cake with yellow roses. Um, and then I'll put the cake topper on. And what else? I think other than that, I'm just going to get like some lunch. I think I'm gonna make like, I'm gonna get subs of different kinds cut up for lunch for all the guests. And then balloons and um, what else? Plate, you know, at Target they have like honeycomb shaped yellow plates. I think I'm gonna get those. So yeah, I think it'll be great. Also, I got her a little like felt flower birthday crown to go with her dress. And that's not here yet, but it will be here soon and I'll share it with you. And I was trying to think if there was anything else. Oh, I got um, honey bee confetti, but that's not here yet either for the table. So I'm really excited to, to do this party and take pictures because um, I think the picture's going to be really cute. I think I want to make like a high chair, um, like banner that goes around the front of the high chair that has like a one. I think I'm going to go to Joanne Fabrics and get um, B or yellow and black uh, ribbon or fabric and make strips and make like little tassels all the way around like on a string and um, just to decorate the front of her high chair because her high chair is not really that pretty <laughs> for a picture. It was from the thrift store. We were like, why would we buy a brand new high chair? Um, so yeah. I'm really excited about that. I sent out invitations and I, it's going to be a small party, but I think it'll be really, really cute. So I'm excited about that. But anyway, the joys of being a mommy live vicariously through your children during holidays and parties. <laughs> so anyway, I've got to go to work. My babysitter's going to be here any minute. I think Brooke might be awake or went back to sleep. I'm not sure, but I hope you all have a great day and I will get back to you soon. Happy crocheting. The weekend is near. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Mwah.